Hello everybody, I'm Alin Deutsch and I welcome you to this talk on aggregation support for modern graph analytics in Tiger Graph. This is joint work with Yu Shu, Min Shi Wu, and Victor Li, all from Tiger Graph. While our product was released relatively recently, its design and development were a long time in the making, drawing from the best ideas yielded by a long-standing research tradition in graph databases. This tradition goes back to when unrestricted graph data were called semi-structured, after which it shifted focus to tree-shaped graphs, motivated by the advent of XML and JSON query languages. Today, there is high industrial interest in unrestricted graphs yet again. They are nowadays known as property graphs, and their query languages, such as Cypher, Gremlin, Sparkle, when you squint at it, and Tiger Graph's own GSQL. This industrial interest has in fact led to two upcoming standardization projects under the ANSI ISO umbrella. SQLPG extends the SQL standard with a chapter on how to export tabular data as graphs and query it, while GQL specifies querying of native graph data. The idea behind modeling data as graphs is to represent entities as nodes and the binary relationships between them as edges in this graph. Uh, the edges may be directed or undirected in order to model symmetric uh, and asymmetric relationships. The nodes and edges may be typed and they may carry labels. In addition, they may be annotated with data, uh, which are sets of key value pairs. As an example, consider a customer entity modeled by the customer labeled node on the left and the product entity modeled by the product label node on the right, as well as the fact that this customer bought this product modeled by the directed edge labeled bought between them. These graph elements also carry some attributes also known as properties in today's terminology such as the name for customer and price for product, and also uh, the discount and quantity for this particular sale, which naturally resides as an attribute of the edge as opposed to the individual vertices. GSQL includes all primitives inherited from classical academic work, which typically focused on specifying complex navigational pattern against the graph. This is not the focus of the paper, uh, but rather, we focus on um, GSQL's novel design choices for supporting large-scale graph analytics, in particular aggregation of data encountered during navigation and control flow support for algorithms that iterate to convergence, such as page rank class algorithms, recommended systems, shortest path computations, etc. So, let's talk about aggregation first. Virtually all existing graph query languages specify it in the conventional SQL style by means of an explicit group by clause, or sometimes, like in the case of Cypher, an implicit one that is really equivalent. In contrast, GSQL specifies aggregation using an alternate paradigm based on aggregating containers that we call accumulators and which brings advantages both in terms of the naturality of specifying the aggregation and in terms of supporting performant implementations thereof. Moreover, the accumulator-based uh, aggregation scheme is versatile and expressive enough that we can and will soon support the conventional style group by clause as syntactic sugar. GSQL traversals collect and aggregate data by writing it into accumulators, which are containers that hold the data value, accept inputs, and aggregate these inputs into the data value using a binary operator. GSQL comes with a bunch of built-in uh, accumulators that reflect the aggregations you will expect from SQL. They also um, allow users to define their own. Accumulators may be global, in which case a query has a single copy of the accumulator throughout its life cycle, 
or it can be vertex attached, in which case every vertex has its own copy of this container. Let's illustrate accumulators by returning to our running examples of customers who buy products, setting ourselves the goal of computing aggregations based on two grouping criteria simultaneously. We would like the per customer revenue and the per product revenue from all these sales. With accumulators, we can proceed as follows. We equip the customer nodes with their own C sales accumulators. We equip the product nodes with their P sales accumulators. And then for every bought edge in the graph, we compute from the discount quantity and price information, the revenue according, uh, corresponding to that sale, and insert this revenue into both the customer per sales, um, the per customer and the per sales accumulators. However, we are not quite done. We have a little bit of specification left to do, stemming from the fact that a vertex may be shared by multiple edges and therefore the values written into its accumulator have to be combined somehow. In this case, consider the first customer who has bought two products, each of the associated edges will generate a revenue to be inserted into the customer's accumulator and we want them summed up. Similarly, if you consider the product in the middle, it too was involved in two sales and we want the two revenues to be summed up into its accumulator. Now, the way I described the above aggregation computation was rather procedural. But one merit of G-SQL's design is that it provides an alternative high-level declarative specification for this kind of aggregation, which harmonizes with SQL style semantics. Here is the G-SQL query corresponding to our running example. Notice first the similarity to SQL due to its organization as a select from where block. Also notice the non-SQL feature starting with the accumulator declaration. Um, they are of some type, meaning that their inputs are aggregated using addition, as discussed in the example. Also notice that in the from clause, we have a pattern which specifies that we are searching for customer nodes C connected to product nodes P via bot labeled edge B. And observe the accum clause, which is a G-SQL unique addition specifying the update to accumulators. In this case, the local variable, this sales revenue, is computed from the appropriate attributes, then inserted into the customer and product nodes accumulators. So what we have specified in this very concise way is a computation that does a single pass over the data and computes the uh, revenue uh, according to aggregation by distinct grouping criteria, Moreover, the groups are distributed, each node accumulating its own group, which is conducive to distributed, uh, massively parallel implementation over the graph, which, of course, we exploit in our framework. The benefits of accumulator-based aggregation transcend the graph model and are equally relevant to standard SQL. They subsume SQL style aggregation. They specify queries in a way that renders them naturally parallelizable. And they facilitate specification of single pass multi-aggregation by different grouping criteria, an ability that is currently unsupported in the upcoming GQL standard graph or any of the existing graph query languages we're aware of, and an ability that we think is crucial um, for graph analytics over large graphs. Um, this ability is actually only partially supported even in SQL, where you have to either write multiple query blocks because you need different group by clauses, or you turn to more sophisticated aggregation primitives that come from the data cube uh, application domain, which however result in wasteful aggregation because they will compute all of the aggregates of data cube when the user may want just two or three. 
As a matter of fact, in the paper, we run an experiment that quantifies the overhead of this wasteful aggregation, showing an up to three-fold speed up of accumulator based over conventional style aggregation. We point you to the paper for a survey of the design space for graph query language semantics. This section contains the bulk of our technical results. In it, we highlight the clashing requirements between the ideal aggregation and the ideal pattern matching semantics. And we survey the various compromises adopted by existing query languages in order to allow these two key language ingredients to coexist. We show formally that G sequels default semantics marks a sweet spot in the design spectrum, leading to both meaningful aggregation semantics and tractability of query evaluation for a practically relevant class of queries that covers most use cases we encounter. All right, it is time for some parting remarks. First, note that due to its control primitives and accumulators, G sequel is Turing complete and strictly more expressive than the standard drafts and most existing query languages. We therefore plan to achieve conformance to the standard simply by translating it to G-SQL. We plan to continue to maintain a library of graph algorithms implemented in G-SQL uh, because this way users can tweak them without need to go to lower level languages and implementing these libraries in the upcoming GQL standard is not an option because it won't have enough expressivity. Tiger Graph sits on both standard working groups and is an active contributor. And this is obviously a two-way street in which GSQL influences the standards and in turn, it is evolving syntactic sugar to better align with the standard. If you're curious about checking out GSQL, I invite you to visit our website where you will find more information. You'll be able to download the free developer edition or try it free in the cloud without any download required. Thank you very much and I'll be happy to take questions now.